Welcome to this episode of Scales Needed, folks. I'm Armin Hammer. Kyle I'm Bogart, Kyle Bogart. Cliff Bogart. Oh. Uh, you guys oh. don't get to talk today. Yeah. It's just me talking. I'm fine with that. Whatever. It will be entirely pantomime That's and sign language and facial expressions. It's really great on the audio version of this. Yeah. Uh, I need you to speak with your eyes, Kyle. Mm-hmm. I need you to speak. With I can your smile eyes. with my eyes or smize, can as you? Tyra Give Banks it calls it. Give me a smize. Whoa. Yeah, see? It was, I don't, it was pretty I don't good smize. Way, but Damn, dude. How'd you, how did that sound, listeners? <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you guys for for listening and watching, those of you who are. Um, and uh, it is earlier in the week than it usually is. Usually yeah. we record on Wednesdays. Yes. But today we're here Monday because... Is something going on this week? Something might be going on this week. Is it in any way related, even tangentially, to this podcast? Yes. What is it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, was, I was working really hard in my mind to come up with something that... Could possibly be related, but isn't. <laughs> it was Rick and Morty episode three. That's right. right. Um, also, the CrossFit Games. Woo! Starting on Thursday. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Forgot about that. And I am going out there on Wednesday morning. Mm. And so we got to make it happen today. Yeah. I think that we are to make this about us, which I think is, you know, it's it kind of the main us, theme sure. of most of our podcasts. That means we're creeping up on the one year anniversary of the Scale is Needed. That's because true. I recall That's true. the first episode, uh, in fact, the very inception of this podcast came from a spirited discussion of uh, the results of last year's games. True. So uh, we're sneaking right up on that, and the circle will be complete. Well, <laughs> I feel like we've actually already hit it because last year's games were at the end of July, mm. and uh, we mm, started off right after the games were over that's right mm. and that the lost first episode mm-hmm. uh, yes. happened at that point yes. so we're either there or going to be there n- within a few days yes yeah that that will be the calendar anniversary i feel the spiritual anniversary will be the completion of the first the first, uh, the season. first cycle mm-hmm. the first cycle yes yeah our first yes. cycle yes. our first season one yes. of scale as needed <laughs> Previously on Scale as Needed. Scale as Needed. Oh, a story nose. in 12 cycles. Ah. <laughs> uh, I, okay, uh, so... Uh, a song of sweat episode and blood. Two. <laughs> episode 2. Episode yeah. 2. Uh, August 5th, 2016. Oh, so episode mm-hmm. 1 was the week before that, which yep. means we've hit that... Mm. We've like, hit the one-year calendar. That's... Uh, that's the, yeah, we're, we're that's hitting true. it right now. Yeah. A song circle jerk is complete. The circle jerk is complete. A song of biceps and tires. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh... <coughs> So and it kind of rhymes with ice and fire. It I does. See. Whoa! Yeah. Oh, it's, it's I didn't even know that. See, Kyle it works on a lot of different levels. So I've never flipped a tire before. Never in what? all of my fitness. I've never even touched one of those There's, big tires. They before. have giant tires at at uh, Hyde Park Gym. Yeah, why didn't you at Hyde Park? Well, they also yeah. have it at uh, Exidium. They had giant tires. Had tire. Do they yeah. have? Do they have them outside? I don't know yeah. if they're there yeah, anymore. They never touched they used to. They looked kind of small to me. They were big. I'm saving myself for yeah. a really big tire. Yeah, <laughs> tire flipping is a lot of fun. Yeah. I hope that they include something similar. I mean, they've had the pig. The pig is pretty similar. Yeah. yeah. And the pigs that they used at the games uh, were really fucking heavy. Mm-hmm. I mean, like like the pig was like 700 pounds, wasn't it? No, it was 570, like 560, yeah. 560, 570, 560, which is big. Same thing. I mean, really. a 500 pound tire is tough to flip. Yeah. yeah. And, Interesting. Uh, a 570 pound tire is approximately 70 pounds harder to flip. Mm, yes. Um, yes, yes. But it's a really good movement. Yeah, I would like to try... I like the idea of trying more strongman yeah. implements. I'm not sure if mm. I would actually enjoy it. Which is weird. Again, mm. as Cliff brought up, mm. Hyde Park Gym, walking distance to your apartment, it is, yes. has a fuck ton of strongman they stuff. Sure do. And they're all really cool, good equipment. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not even like shitty, rusty, you're going to get tetanus equipment. Yeah, it's yeah. like There's solid There's probably a stuff. little bit of tetanus somewhere on that equipment. It's a gym. There's yes. tetanus everywhere. everywhere. And face yeah. herpes. Yes. If you mush your face. I yeah, prefer to work out the climbing gym. Why? Because they're... I can be almost the strongest guy yes. in the gym. At yeah. Hyde Park Gym, that's n- that's a never thing. Big no. fish, small pond. That's mm-hmm. the strategy. Yeah. That's the yeah. strategy with uh, when Who's we Who's the gyms. strongest guy at, at Austin Bouldering Projects? I don't know. Uh, um, I've never yeah. really seen anyone. Pu- I mean, I, I, I go at very specific times. So for all I know... You know, there's you know some West Side barbell guy who comes in every there Tuesday isn't. morning, but because I always go in the evenings, but it, I don't really see anyone ever pulling up 
are pulling big weight or anything. Yeah. On the weekends, there's a, a little couple that does some pretty legit looking O lifting uh, and I've stuff. Seen I've them seen lift. them. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he's like Kyle, a smaller Mike, guy. Mike, have you pulled the heaviest deadlift pulled at the Austin Bouldering Project? I don't know. I've certainly never seen anyone else put anywhere even close to five. He's not not on. saying that. That's yes, the case. That's true. So if anyone out there is a listener and goes to the and Austin Bouldering the Project and has ever pulled more than five twenty five, then please. Uh, let us know. I think the real key here is if you are also a big fish in a small pond, mm. you can relate to how awesome it feels to be a big fish in a small <laughs> yes. pond and how unnecessary it is to ever leave that pond. Mm-hmm. No, that is very it's true. It's your mm-hmm. pond. It is very much my pond. Well, the thing is, like, it also, in, I think it's positive in a way because if I'm around a bunch of strong guys lifting a bunch of silly weight, then my weight is not going to feel like it's enough, and so it's going to cause me to make dumb decisions You're gonna all the time. You're going to have to push time. it a lot mm-hmm. more. Whereas, like, now, like, with my squats, which I've been trying to be, because I think it's more important well, now that I'm riddled with injuries and getting older to mellow the fuck out, and so if I can put 315 on a squat bar and, like, feel pretty confident about that, and that's definitely more than anyone else is there it, to do, like, my high rep squats, then I'm not going to do something stupid and put, like, you know, 450 on the bar just to try and impress some <laughs> douchebag on steroids who's not, watching gym, who's not watching me anyway but who yeah. in my mind is is, is keeps mm-hmm. calling me um a little girly man with a small <laughs> penis how does he know armin how does he know because he can't <laughs> see it through your shorts mm-hmm. uh, but that's no, actually yeah, that's why true. i work out in my garage a lot yeah, yeah. because katie is not stronger than me yeah, yeah. so mm-hmm. and we do no conditioning because she would crush me mm-hmm. in conditioning workouts yeah, so yeah. Oh. we're just not we're not playing that game no i uh i had this literally happen uh <laughs> with that couple that is with it uh I, just, I just mentioned who do some legito lifting yeah, i was yeah. doing some snatch workouts for maybe the second or third time in a while and i had made the decision that i was only going to use super low weight and just you know, uh, just work on technique because I think that just trying to pull heavy weights above my head is just dumb, and I've never really been good at uh, the snatch anyway. Uh, so then I saw that couple come and, and take the platform, and I immediately disassembled my bar and moved off to something else because I knew I knew in my brain that I just couldn't in I couldn't I did not have the strength of will, the strength of constitution yeah. to just keep like do working on like technique stuff with like 115 pounds on the bar. I was going to have to start adding more weight if someone was le- was uh, right. next to me. So I was like, all right, I'm going to nip this in the bud and just moved on to something else at that I point. I think I think that is absolutely the most mature decision you've made <laughs> since you decided to quit drinking. Yes, there you go. <laughs> One, I'm quitting drinking and silly weights and uh, Yeah. There's there is no life. way because I've yep. I've been at the gym while that same couple is there lifting, and you know they they're very respectful. Yep. They stack on a platform together. Mm-hmm. They take their turns. They stay in their space. Yep. They're not taking up lots. They're using the platforms the way they're meant to be used, yep. which is awesome. And you can tell that they've been training exactly. Um, but there is absolutely no fucking way in hell that if I was lifting next to them, I would allow them to outlift me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> no way. No, no way. chance. I just can't do it. I can't do it. Uh-huh. I actually can't do I, it. I currently, I know for a fact, because there's no way anybody else has done more, that I have the the clean and jerk record of Austin Boulder Project. Oh, really? Because there's nice. no fucking, yeah, oh, there's that's no true. one that's there true. That's true. That, can, yeah, yeah. that can clean and jerk what I yeah, can it's clean. It's the kind jerk. of thing where it's like, if you and, and just looking at the size of the people who are walking around, like I could just walk up to anyone there and like look at them and say like, You've never jerked a bar before. Exactly, but even <laughs> let's say even he's a little jacked guy, I could say like it's not impossible that there's someone who's your size who lifts more than me, but that would put you in like such a high percentile like of elite lifters in the right. world the who are that size. Yeah, it's just statistically improbable <laughs> that you, that's possible for you. And so. again, this is going back to one of the earliest things that Cliff ever talked about on the show. Oh, I, is did, I forgot already. You make mental gymnastics to prove the things that you want to believe. <laughs> yes, exactly. And that yeah. is part of the mental gymnastics yes. that we tell ourselves in order to believe that yep. we are the best of the best in mm-hmm. this tiny little gym. Yep. Mm-hmm. I, uh, the and other it day, feels so good. And occasionally, occasionally though, that little bit of motivation helps. I was uh, there on a Friday and I had done, actually I think it was the, may have been the same day as that other thing, but I was uh, doing some snatch workouts and then I moved on to do some overhead squats afterwards. So I moved on, was doing that. And then just some guy like had the audacity to get in the rack of a 
facing me and then start like repping squats at 275 uh, and I was just like listen I can't <laughs> allow that to happen <laughs> so I put 240 so I did it you're coming at the king so I ended up doing so I, I couldn't squat that day because I was just that was not a squat day but I was doing overhead squats so what was going to be some warm up overhead squats turned into a 245 pound overhead squat and I was like hey this is a good PR for me certainly post injury PR uh, and uh, and so like it actually resulted in something positive it also could have resulted in me like dislocating my elbow and dropping a bar on the back of yeah, my yeah. neck. But that didn't happen. Which actually <laughs> you deserved. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, sure, I, I sure did, Armin. I sure did. Uh, uh, I, I, do, I do very much enjoy lifting at ABP, not because there aren't people mm-hmm. that are as strong as us, but because there are people who are actually lifting. Yeah. Because it's not, you're not going into a Gold's Gym mm-hmm. or a 24 hour fitness or something, and most people are like wasting their time yeah. in the gym. It's actually really nice because there's like, there's a lot of people who actually squat to depth and mm-hmm. who press, not just bench, but actually press. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's really cool to see. There's a lot of people who do deadlifts, whether it's a trap bar or a sumo or like, people I'm are pulling. Pulls, I'm yeah. also seeing the popu- growing popularity just by seeing what people are doing of uh, Mark Riptone starting strength. Oh, for sure. I've seen yeah. about 50 people in there, it seems, uh, go in there and do squats and then standing in the rack afterwards, do presses, and then start doing deadlifts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if you do all three of those things in a workout, you're following starting strength. Yeah, there's I don't literally there's, no other yeah, program no. that tells yeah. you to do that. That is no, true. I've noticed are, a lot of people doing shoulder presses, and I just mm-hmm. don't I don't think I've ever seen anybody doing because, I mean, I do them all the time, but it's like it's it's new for me right. to see people doing barbell shoulder presses. It could be just that. a climbing thing as well, right? So true. that's a, like shoulder. I don't really know how climbers train. Mm-hmm. So climbers could train that sort of thing on a regular basis. Yeah. I know that the, the very first fitness experience that I had before I even started crossfitting was at a climbing gym. I joined mm-hmm. The climbing gym because I was like, this looks really cool. I'll give this a shot. This is fun. And they had a little gym, very very small. I mean, like s- about the size of this studio. Mm-hmm. And uh, it wasn't even separated. It was just one of the areas where they didn't put one of those like fucking fake walls up. Mm-hmm. And it fuck had, those walls. Yeah, it had like a cable crossover yeah, machine yeah. that doubled as pullover, uh, pull up place, mm-hmm. and then like a few dumbbells and a bench. Mm-hmm. And I would I would see people doing a lot of ab stuff and then a lot of pressing mm-hmm. so maybe it's a rock climber thing but one thing that we definitely see a ton of these guys doing is pull-ups yeah so it's like th- that's that's the thing i like training at abp mm-hmm. because at least there are people there who are training mm-hmm. yeah. it's not a ton of like plus random I, I like the shit. whole that whole gym is for me anyway sort of an aspirational gym because i have in my head that around the same time i lose enough weight to have abs then i might be light enough to i don't know Play around with climbing. Yeah. Oh, cool! Yeah, to climb I'm up not, a thing. Exactly, that's not to climb that's up not, a thing. That wasn't what I thought you would be yeah, aspiring yeah. to. I thought you <laughs> oh, were no. going to say, "Around the time I'm light enough to have abs, one of these hot climber chicks <laughs> is going <laughs> to climb up all over this." Uh-huh. You don't realize you, we forgot that Cliff is an asexual robot <laughs> from <laughs> Venus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, that's the thing. It's like uh, I've been, you know, asked by people there. You know, do you climb? Do you climb? It's like no, too fat. That's been my response. <laughs> like, no, nope, too like, fat. <laughs> much too fat. Well, yeah. I, I think I've told Even just to just jiggle my belly. For yes, I've, 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 no, I've told. I, I think I told this already, but yeah, it was a funny walking in. I remember this. Uh, I uh, they took me on a tour, and I was the girl who was on, taking me on the tour. Said I was like, yeah, well, I'm really more interested in the gym. I think I'm a bit too big to actually enjoy the climbing thing. And she says, no, my my boyfriend's a really big guy, and he uh, climbs up the things, and he weighs like 200 pounds. And I, said, <laughs> I said, well, if I lose 65 pounds, <laughs> I'll give it a shot. And uh-huh. it's true. If I were to get down to 200 pounds, I will I will start climbing. Well, shit. yeah, because when when the like superstars. Of of your sport are 115 pounds mm-hmm. uh, a 200 pound guy is like a big why do you yeah. exist yeah, you yeah. you have you serve no purpose in nature <laughs> you freak mm-hmm. uh, and so it makes a lot of sense that mm-hmm. they'd be like just giant of a human being who, mm-hmm. who yeah. weighs what an adult male there's should no weigh. upper <laughs> limit on this rock climbing thing well, I've seen <laughs> the biggest people there are 200 pounds well, ish I, I love the no thing problem. where it's like she's so bad at Determining how much a human weighs. Right. Oh, yeah. But she looked at you at that point as well. Ah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, no, no, no. But True. this is the thing. It's like, had you say, say, had you gone into that office and like robbed the place, mm-hmm. it would have been like, yeah, <gasps> like six foot two, about two hundred pounds. <laughs> shit, I should have robbed more shit back then. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah, and you know that she was exaggerating. You know her boyfriend's like 160 pounds, oh, yeah, and yeah, she's yeah. like, he's a giant. He's 200 <laughs> pounds. Guy. That's the that's uh, that's that bubble that they talk about yeah. people living in. You know, it's like when you live in that rock climbing world. Like that's the that you imagine that being the upper limit of what he. They don't know of a human being who's mm. limited by his own weight. You know, not unlike uh, these whales of people that we are who have to. You know, wake up three times a night because we're being suffocated by our own body mass. <laughs> <laughs> your body uh, is like, you've gone too far. Exactly. Fuck you. It's like it's normal that your arm falls completely asleep three times a night, right? That happens to everybody. <laughs> Good. I'm glad. <laughs> uh, uh, but no, yeah, I, I think one of the things that's kind of interesting about that gym as well is that like I have seen a lot of people recently doing the starting strength thing, and they're people who look like me. Mm. They're not like these guys who are the rock climbers. Women. Who come, uh, <laughs> <laughs> ah, 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 yes. Ah, you got me there. Yes. <laughs> but like, that was awesome. Sniped. <laughs> but no, there, Wasted. But there is this thing that really sucks for me as a person who, like, you know, just doesn't have a huge fitness background. And I go in there, and there are these guys who are just very tiny and like rock climby people, and they just go up there and they're just doing a million pull ups and they're doing like a, you know, they can just mm-hmm. do anything. Yeah. And like, mm-hmm. they're not lifting real heavy, but at the same time, it's like you're infinitely fitter than me and it really like you know annoys the shit out of me but recently lots of people doing the starting strength and i'm like looking at them like i'm farther along in that than yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, i can squat way more than you i've it's been suffering cool. on it this begins. longer than you by have. the way speaking of pull-ups guys i did a pull-up for the first time in like six months man nice. and i did something more it was on the starting strength youtube thing and uh, ripto was like you know he, he does video about chins you're doing strict chins but he's like, you know, in order for a chin to have a full range of motion, you need to be a dead hang with all that crap. You know, uh, if you can see on the video, it's like dead hang with your fucking whatever, shoulders shrugged up and touching the chest at the top. Uh, and then I was thinking, fuck that shit. That's not <laughs> happening. But sure enough, at my 284 body weight, not having done anything resembling a pull up uh, for a while, I've done some pull downs and stuff. Nope. Grab the bar and chin up position from a dead hang. Smack the chest into it. <laughs> no kip. Fine. Coblamo. Uh huh. We're Your talking. This journey is life. done. We're yep. talking pull ups. <laughs> yes. We're talking push ups. Yes. Uh-huh. We're talking the wide gamut oh, of yeah. what your upper body no, can it's do. It's actually the perfect time to start uh. realizing this because I've realized that my back really needs a lot of work. Mm-hmm. So, besides a and all that crap, I need something to inspire me to uh, live. <laughs> so, in order to, uh, in or- sorry, I'm spitting all. In order to inspire me to live, I need to make progress in something. So, as I continue to lose weight, and as my legs and lower body continue to shrink from atrophy because they're not getting used. I will become get w- an elite gymnast. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm going for, man. Uh, actually, get, getting more and more to being a climber. I think that's that was my destiny. Yeah, yeah. I was trying to my destiny. Did trying you say to bring that's my there. destiny? Look it's at his destiny. Uh, his yeah, destiny uh, is not uh, climbing. Uh, <laughs> but if you no. climb, your destiny will be to fall. <laughs> 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 but there's pads. There's pads. <laughs> Those are rated Just for giant humans of 180 pounds. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. That doing a strict chin up with full range of motion like that is quite challenging, and you should be proud of that, especially weighing 284. Because most yeah. people who can do strict chin ups can't do strict chin ups with 284 pounds. Total. Yes, that is mm-hmm. true. Right? Oh, Add body I weight, that's and then true. More weight. I should see, yeah, who who's doing a weighted strict chin ups, you know, dead hang all the way to chest touching, and can I calculate the weight on those motherfuckers? See, oh, yeah, I'm doing strict chin ups with, uh, you know, 80 pounds. Yep. Sure, but you weigh 150 pounds. Right. So, so if you add up all that short. weight, I'm still so stronger than you dangling 130 pound dumbbell between That's your right. legs <laughs> and doing that chin up. What you, what you do is, at this point, basically, if you do, you do the strict chin up, you've got that. If you mm-hmm. do the strict dip, I can do a couple of those. Then you probably have the gym record for for, for the dip and the pull up. That's true. Oh yeah, yeah. as long as Kyle and I don't participate. That is true. Yeah, yeah. But uh, no, I think <laughs> I think I'm going to uh, be uh, one. I'm gonna think uh, besides going to Rossi, I'm gonna think uh, gonna take a page out of Kyle's book there. Kyle doing mm. the. 20 rep squats mm-hmm. uh, as his knee was being repaired. Mm-hmm. Uh, 20 rep squats, adding some weight every week, yeah. just once a week squatting, is more the thing I'm going to do. Have yeah. you considered doing exercise that isn't one of the big three? It's not a, a pure squat, it's not a pure deadlift, and it's not a pure press. Tell me more. 
I mean, like <laughs> unilateral work, right? Oh, like yeah. uh, Bulgarian split squats. You can mm. you can progress those things the way you mm. progress your squat or your deadlift mm. or your press, right? You can do mm. Bulgarian split squats. You can do good mornings. You can yeah. do back extensions. You can do uh, a whole lot of stuff mm. that's like, you know, dumbbell, pre- you do a lot of dumbbell press because you're doing the bodybuilding thing. So, but like, there's a lot of different workouts and movements that you do, single-legged kettlebell deadlifts. And it's like all this stuff will fix some of the little fuck-ups that are going on in your body and uh, over time will allow you to lift more weights again, mm-hmm. but will still give you like small actionable goals. Like, hey, I want to be able to hold a weighted back extension for mm. 30 seconds with 90 pounds or whatever. Mm. I don't know. You know what I mean, I think to all those things, yes. But at the same time also, I do want to be squatting, squatting as much weight as I can, even if it is only the bar, uh, keeping pace, uh, beltless, keeping pace with what I can do beltlessly. Because I made the big error lately of, okay, I got these new Olympic lifting shoes and I'm going to, Get take everything down to scratch. Just start uh, lifting super lightweight, adding a little bit of weight. No belt, everything will be great. One thirty-five for three sets of five, great. One forty-five, also good. One fifty-five, ooh, is getting a little shaky. But I'm gonna go over the hump because that's the most my back will hurt. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, just uh, just it's, it's like everyone laughs, but everyone laughs. But as he's saying this, I'm like, yes, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you must break through the, pain, break threshold. Through the pain threshold. And then, well, one si- squat of one sixty-five yesterday, and shit, <laughs> had to pull out the goddamn belt in order to squat one sixty-five for three sets of five. See, that is uh, that is. Y- you're telling me that story as a I want to keep squatting, and you're, what you're actually doing <laughs> is telling me reasons why I'm right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and here's the one thing I will say. Here's one thing I will say is that uh, having gone through the 20 rep squat thing for a while, one of the benefits that I did notice because there's I think there's a tendency coming from CrossFit and with a lot of the stuff you were talking about of changing it up, doing a lot of different movements, a lot of different things. With the 20 rep squat progression, one benefit that I got in terms of injury recovery was it gave me an accurate way to kind of check in on my progress because it wasn't a straight shot. I would take sometimes two or three weeks off if my knee was uh, bothering me and I would kind of pull back and then I would make adjustments to my mobility routine or my warm up or various other things. Uh, But I had that consistent check in every week of like, how do the 20 squats feel? Am I getting stronger? Does my knee feel better? And obviously the squat particularly benefited the getting my quadricep back after the injury. But I began incorporating other consistent elements. So 20 rep squat every week, one uh, Tabata um, assault bike thing mm-hmm. almost like two times a week. And just these, it was it had been a long time since I had done various things very consistently, like every week. So it enabled me to see a linear progression that's not kind of checking back in on, I think generally my fitness is better or, you know, I, that workout felt better than I think it should if I was doing something that was a bit more varied or a bit more randomized or hard to track. But it allowed me each week to check in on my mobility, like just the squat, and like doing a, that the assault bike thing to see how many calories I could get just gave me this marker that I could see inching forward every week. And it was just adding a little bit of weight, backing off. My knee feels good. My knee feels bad. And that was certainly coming back from injury was very helpful for me because it gave mm-hmm. me – and then I did more stuff around that, but that sort of was my baseline to sort of check in with where I was. So yeah. that helped, was helpful. That makes well, sense. Yeah. I, I would I would definitely say that that is a good plan. Picking mm-hmm. something and doing it regularly has that effect, mm-hmm. right? It gives you something to really easily compare and gives you a lot of data to see where you're at. Um, so just do that, mm-hmm. Cliff. That's yeah. a good idea. Oh, just, yeah. just do whatever. <laughs> yeah. I, I, w- I would like one element of pure consistency. There. So I like the 20 rep squat being a one element and, and in addition – all the other shit you were saying, sure, sounds good. Uh, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, oh, also, yeah, for whatever reason, yeah, my back, it's the squats that my back doesn't like. Deadlifts, it's sort of okay with, except when it's sore from squatting. Mm. So whatever is going on, is it's it with possible? The why don't you do 20 rep deadlifts? Uh, I will be doing 20 rep deadlifts. Oh, you're just doing 20 rep across the board? Yeah. Uh, maybe. Oh, well, my plan for the first week is sure, but okay. uh, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I, the, the one thing I plan on actually being consistent with is the 20-rep squats. The you rest of the shit is fungible. You should mess around with your squat 
stance and width and stuff mm. you should like try mm -hmm. really wide squats and really narrow squats and like offset squats and like sort of like weird foot placement and mm. in and out and like you know just mess around with a bunch of different types of squats and i think that'll one help uh even just if you're doing that while warming up mm. it'll help uh it'll help wake up a bunch of different muscles but also you might find that you're just squatting in a way that doesn't compute with your body no. Oh, I'm, I'm sure of that. <laughs> I figure that out. The one consistent element that's going to be, though, with those squats is I'm going to use those motherfucking Reebok lifters because I just bought them and I'm going to use the hell <laughs> yeah. out of them. The important yeah, thing, expensive shoes. A very yep. important oh, yes, part yes. of the process. Uh, uh, speaking of expensive shoes. Oh, yeah? The CrossFit <laughs> Games are starting this week. And I was really hoping you were going to say, you got me some expensive shoes. I did not get Aww. you expensive shoes. I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, the Games are starting this week, and that means everyone is in Madison picking up their packets, and they're getting all their mm. new cool gear. And uh, everyone got, like, Legacy Lifters and nice. uh, new Nano 7s. Cool. And all that good stuff. But uh, let's talk about the Games, guys. Yeah. Because... Mm -hmm. In a week from now, mm -hmm. I will have won a million dollars nice. thanks to the Reebok Pick'em, Pick mm -hmm. which I'm still not 100% sure why you guys aren't, aren't participating in. What? Hmm? What's it's, happening? Uh, Reebok released a Fantasy Games Pick'em. It's top 10 men, top 10 women, yeah. top 5 teams. Yeah. And then they have prizes for first, second, and third. But if you get all 25 picks right in the correct positions, nice. you get a million dollars. The main reason I have um, I have yet to uh, um, uh, to submit uh, my picks is that I haven't thought about that since we discussed it yeah. last week. That's the time. thing, though. If you take, like, two and a half minutes, yeah. you can just get it done. Yes. And then maybe you might win something. That's true. That's true. I should pick them. What else could you do, though, with two and a half minutes that is a better use of your time? Well, neither of you guys are making love, so no. that two and a half minutes <laughs> is on this. <laughs> uh, we could, you could masturbate your wiener, most definitely. That's and, true. Uh, but then what do you do with the remaining two minutes and 15 uh, seconds? Hey -oh. No, no, no. I, I, I have long, sensual <laughs> masturbation <laughs> sessions. Light Go a candle. There, there, there are candles. Half hour, 45 incense. minutes. I, I do tantric masturbation. <laughs> <laughs> There's no orgasm. <laughs> I just enjoy my body and connect spiritually with myself. That's right. For an hour. <laughs> yeah. It's more of like a sun worship yeah. session. That's right. That's yeah, right. I understand. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so the games are, are this week, yeah. and uh, there's going to be an obstacle course. Tantric masturbation. <laughs> tantric <laughs> obstacle course. <laughs> no, I'm not. Anyway, <laughs> so there's going to be an obstacle course. And they released kind of like a footage of, of what the obstacle course kind of looked like. And it looks yeah, really cool. It did look oh, cool, yeah. That yeah. was a kick-ass obstacle course. There's like course. the like rope it. wall, and yeah. then there's the – they have to like uh, go across like a bunch of ropes mm -hmm. that they have to swing across and then climb the last one. And mm -hmm. then there's uh, – it looked like there was also a warped wall like out of American Ninja Warrior. Yeah, yeah look at that. So what I like um, – I saw I saw a video of Annie on a warped wall, but I wasn't sure if that was part of the actual cro the, this thing, right? Is it part of it? I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah, this is interesting. I like that they're I like that they're releasing a video in advance so that people can actually work on strategy and stuff. I wondered, will they have access to the implement uh, prior to? The games, do you know? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if they'll have access to the implements prior to the games in that they can practice on this exact course. Yeah, yeah. but I I think that they're there's a lot of people who are like, oh, this is going on, and they're finding obstacle courses in the uh -huh. Madison area. Interesting. Yeah, I um, see. Part of that is the I, I think I like the idea that they're they're seeing it in advance. I would like even better if they had access to it prior to this, just because. Um, I, it removes that random element of yeah. like you, people just like I'm gonna try this technique because I I'm taking a guess or someone else says I'm gonna try this technique because well, I'm taking a guess. Like, look at the jumping over the stumps there. Yeah. That's gonna be fun to watch. That's gonna people. be fun. But yeah, I just would like to risks. see. Yeah, I would like to see um, people. Uh, I would like to see people like come up with a consistent best practices strategy and then apply that. Uh, when they actually get in there and see who can move the fastest. Because well, I remember that from the last obs obstacle course years ago. It's like people did different, like heat number two, someone did something, and then everyone saw like, shit, I guess that works. Like throw your legs through the bars mm -hmm. and then started doing that. Yeah, they should um, they should uh, get Hunter McIntyre to yeah. run the course yes. and show everyone how fast and how, how it should be done. Yes. And then, and then they could give him a packet with lots of goodies in it. Uh, and then, because it was your idea, you, he would send you the packet. But you're like, right. I don't need this stuff, and then you give it to Kyle. 
Yeah, that's right. You know, and that way I could get some sweet yeah, ass yeah. shoes. We were about the I same. I just want a packet, man. Yeah, I love swag bags. Don't we all? Um, so the the Oscar course looks pretty cool. Uh, Trombley's uh, strategy on the monkey bars, I think, is very weird. I'm not sure if it's it's the fastest way of doing. it. It's like a match grip, and then uh, yeah, that was that bar. was weird. That's clearly not that's, like because people who do like the cycling legs. Yeah, like, that's like way, way faster. faster yeah. And then the same thing with like getting across those four ropes. Yeah, yeah. You know, he matches on each one. Yeah, yeah. When I feel like it'd be way faster to just like take a risk and swing across and grab. Yeah. yeah. Um, but either way, this who might knows? have been his first pass. This could have been the yeah. first pass. That's right. And you know we'll see we'll see people really kind of refining it over the next couple of days. Yeah. Um, we oh, also yeah, the know. Only thing it seems to yeah. be missing for me though is uh, a bunch of cool lights, some water pits, mm-hmm. and a bunch of Japanese people watching it. This is true. Like yes. where where are all of those? Yeah, people? yeah. MXCF yes. is what we're missing here. Uh, that would be that would be really funny if At there the was. At the end, they will take the final heat to the f- and the final event on Sunday will be. Mount Toriyama. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's Ninja Warrior, isn't it? Yes, yeah. that is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, the the last heat, they before the final thing in the obstacle course, mm. they put up that wall of doors mm. where like uh, you have four doors to choose from, and one of them is is the real door. Is that but a the real rest, thing on American Ninja that's Warrior? That's from MXC. That's okay. so I was referring to Ninja Warrior. Oh, which Kyle, uh, what's was MXC? You, most Extreme Championship. Oh, it's like that? obstacle courses, but they're made to prank people. It's oh. like uh, you know, there'll be there'll be uh, it'll be a, a puddle like a pond, uh-huh. and there'll be stumps. Uh-huh. But like forty percent of the stumps are actually just like floating foam. <laughs> so like you run across and you try and plant on it, and you just go right into the fucking water. I have not seen this. Or they have like a it's like a series of like five doors. Uh-huh. Uh, or five like doorways, uh-huh. and each one has four doors to pick from, and only one of those doors is is a door that opens, uh-huh. and the other ones are just like solid wood that you like <laughs> smack into, and you have to like <laughs> run full speed to like pick the door that you're trying to pick. <laughs> it's fucking awesome. You guys never watched MX? Yeah, I have never seen this. No. It is, and it's it's ja- it's a Japanese game show, uh. and they took it. Here's the genius. It's not just a Japanese game show. They took the Japanese game show. Oh, I've seen and this. They, I remember this. They oh. dubbed <laughs> it. They dubbed it with, Amer- <laughs> with American. <laughs> with yeah, American. I, I remember this. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I remember this. They dubbed it with now, American. Yeah. Uh, so this is. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> <laughs> with, with, they dubbed it with American stuff that doesn't actually have anything to do with what's going on. It's just people making yeah. fun of. I totally remember this now. I, yeah. I used to call it the Japanese people hurting themselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So here's one where he's okay. like running up like a chute and there's a giant foam boulder that he has to dodge that's like uh, <laughs> taking up the entirety of the thing. There's a little doorways that he can run yeah. into. And if he doesn't get there in time, he gets like, so, oh, oh, there's, fuck there's you, a man. person <laughs> in that doorway. He's like fighting a dude so, in that doorway. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> oh, show, why? This show was awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, right this show was amazing. And uh, so, so uh, what they... Oh, oh wow. You just took a Take this off. Offense. This is not good pod. Take <laughs> this off. The MXC is, uh, is what it should end yeah. up being. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> you know, we've been, we've been talking about fitness for too long. I don't yeah. care about this anymore. Uh, I'm going to give you the cliff notes of other things that have happened in the fitness world. There's mm. a strongman event at the games that yeah. includes yokes and sled pulls and uh, farmers. Did they? Oh, that's, that's, that's an individual event. That's an individual event, oh, okay. and it looks really cool. It's yeah. like it's like a yoke. It's like a kind of like a medley, uh, where you travel a bunch of distance with each of them multiple mm-hmm. times. Mm-hmm. So you kind of like yoke walk, farmers carry, sled drag, yoke walk, farmers carry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it looks it looks very very cool. Um, and I think it's going to be fun to see people like just brute, like just move this from yeah, here yeah. to there type mm-hmm. thing, mm-hmm. which is very cool. And James Mosier snatched 175 kilos. Remind me, and of James that's one in pounds. Uh, that's 375 pounds ish. Oh. Yeah. Uh, is he, uh, who is he? James Mosier was like a prodigy weightlifter. Uh, uh, 385 pounds. The prodigy weightlifter who was in uh, who's in prison for a while. Uh, oh, he was the guy who did like the screaming. Yeah, he's like loss, crazy. He's like, ah! Yeah, yeah. So he that. snatched yeah, yeah, 175 yeah. kilos recently. Oh, sweet. Oh, by the way, I uh, just looking into James Moser. See, saw a video of him snatching as a youth there, doing a. Uh, also a failed attempt at a snatch at a competition. Yeah. Doing the exact same screaming walk thing. Yeah, no, <laughs> it, it's been the same since he was a child. He's He is probably the most intense lifter mm. uh, that's out there. He's just In a sport known for its intensity. Right, <laughs> right. He's like, it, the if you took Shankles, mm. if you took Shankles, like, intensity mm-hmm. of character, mm-hmm. 
and you you just took that intensity of character like that sort of qu- quantity of intensity yeah, yeah. and you added it to screaming and yelling to the John North factor the John North factor yeah mm-hmm. you'd have Mosier's level of just like interesting of you so, know, like he, rage so he so he is awesome. their There's love a, child actually it's fantastic yeah, yeah. I was mm-hmm. watching uh, I was speaking of fitness related things I was watching the numbers coming in from the Pan Ams and all the fuck because I follow most of those guys on um, uh, on the Instagrams and God. There are some strong Americans now. It seemed like there was more. It seemed, as someone who doesn't know anything about this, that there were lots of medals going to Americans over the course of the week. And I think they took second, or the men took second. The men's or? team took second, and the women's team took fourth. Took fourth, yeah. Which yeah. is good. It's and good historically, chance. that's good for us, right? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah. Have we won any time recently? Um, as a team, I don't think we've we've mm-hmm. won Pan Ams yeah. because you you just can't beat Colombia. Yeah, yeah. They Columbia it dominates. Mm. It's it's absurd. Yeah. They like they they the first two days of like the first three days of a five day competition, mm. like maybe forty percent or fifty percent of the divisions competing. Yeah. They they like swept. Yeah. yeah. It's, it was brutal. They Crazy. they were yeah they were win- they were winning everything. Hmm. Um, but also Pan Am's is scored a little differently. The team scoring for Pan Am's is scored a little differently than something like Worlds. Mm-hmm. Worlds is scored just based off of your total. Mm-hmm. Pan Am's, you get points for your snatch, your clean and jerk, and your total. Mm-hmm. So, you know, for example, someone like uh, D'Angelo Osorio, mm-hmm. whose back was hurting him and couldn't snatch to his full ability, yeah. still was able to score a lot of points because he took gold in the clean and jerk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's, there's like little things like that that play into Pan Am's that doesn't necessarily play into Worlds. Because like in Pan Am's, our men's team gets second, women's team gets fourth. Mm-hmm. At Worlds, if we're in the top thirty, mm-hmm. it's like holy shit, we have like a we have the, the best performance in the past sixty years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Yeah. Still you know, slight so difference. What is Columbia's deal? What is why what are they It's doing? that crazy jerk position. That's what well, I think it is. If it's a technique <laughs> issue, then why isn't that technique issue being copied by everyone else? That's really funny you should say that because uh not only is is it only a pan american thing uh-huh. but it's mainly like two or three countries that do it yeah uh that that specific jerk technique yeah where they it, move their hands way out yeah, to the yeah. outside it of the bar. looks super fucking cool it's yeah. really difficult to do because it, it requires a, a tremendous amount of upper back flexibility yeah uh to be able to like, like balance the, the bar, bar across your, your shoulders and your clavicles as you sort of like let go and move your hands out real wide mm-hmm um, but in my opinion, it puts the bar in a much better position. Yeah. Well, I mean, if if they're having that level of success, is I mean, are we seeing people in uh, other countries or people in the United States attempt to emulate that no. technique? I don't think that. I don't. I don't think it's like uh, you know, it's not like old school kung fu movies where there's mm. a secret technique that everyone like. But everyone's apparently, trying to chase. it is because you're telling me that. But like, not really. You know, it's only like that here. Yeah. yeah. Right. Mm. If you go to you know, like people talk about oh the Russian method of training or the mm-hmm. Chinese method of training or the Bulgarian method of training mm-hmm. and uh, I would say many of those schools of thought have more similarities than they do differences it's just it's it's like they all have different approaches to solving the same problems because at the end of the day it's all the same problem the mm-hmm. problem is this you're trying to recover from the most stress possible mm-hmm. period that's mm-hmm. that is 100 percent of training for weightlifting. Yeah. you're trying to require you're trying to apply the most stress you can recover from mm-hmm. in order to lift more weights yeah, yeah. and so each one of those schools of thought have different ways of approaching that um, and building past you know those like breaking points but uh, you know like technique wise you know I honestly don't think that there's any real fundamental differences between what a Russian lifter does versus what a Chinese lifter does versus what a Colombian lifter does mm-hmm. and while there are some little like little issues there maybe a slight angle change on the shin or a slight angle change on the back i think the bar moves the way it does because of physics not Mm -hmm. because of you know any sort of national flavor that we might add to the Mm -hmm. technique and there's those little differences because people's body shapes are different and Mm -hmm. so like you know the chinese methodology may be uh may be mostly designed around Chinese weightlifters, people who have that type of frame, that type mm-hmm. of ratio of limb length to, you know, to mm-hmm. body segments and, you know, like all those things come into play. So when you talk about like, oh, the Russian method of lifting or the Chinese method of lifting, there isn't necessarily one that's like better mm-hmm. because all of it has been successful. I mean, for fuck's sake, the U.S. was like the dominant weightlifting power in the 50s, mm-hmm. right? So... It's like everybody has had their day. Which, by the way, uh, have you been seeing the promos that like like it looks like Rogue is doing some video content around old like school. old school weightlifters and yeah. stuff, which is really fun 
to look at, like yeah. uh, like the Olympics from the nineteen I don't know whatevers. But it's like these just guys with just no like nothing that would even resemble technique, just grabbing weights from the outside and like just heaving them up, and then just like pressing them out overhead. Well, I think the rules were also different there because yeah, yeah. the clean had to be clean. Yeah. You couldn't touch your body with the bar at right. any point. Oh. That's, That's why it was called, called the clean. Oh, okay. So, so it, it, like, it couldn't rest on your chest. It couldn't. Could, the okay. clean. Well, the clean couldn't touch anything until it got to your chest. Oh, okay. Right? And the snatch couldn't touch anything until it got overhead. Interesting. Uh, Interesting. And then they had the press, which was essentially, you know, you can clean it however you want, yeah. but you, you can't use your legs or your lower body to, yeah. to get it overhead. And it's like, the, the way that weightlifting looks right now is 100% an effect of the rule set. Yeah. You know, if they change the rules again, mm-hmm. then the way that the weightlifting uh, techniques have developed mm-hmm. would also have to adjust for that. Yeah. yeah. Um, Plus, it looks cooler. Yeah, it looks. Mm-hmm. And it, this is these are the rules that allow the most amount of weight lifted. Mm-hmm. I mean, there may be some adjustments you can make that allow more weight to be lifted, maybe with like a press out change mm-hmm. or. Uh, um, you know, I guess maybe a continental, but like really the the continental clean wouldn't add a ton, mm. I think. What is a continental clean? That's where usually you see people with like axle bars, uh-huh. like strongmen do it. They like almost like switch grip, deadlift it, uh-huh. and then put it onto like their belly or their oh, belt. Yeah, yeah. And you've seen, you've seen that. Well, yeah, I know I've seen that. I've seen what that is. Shoulders. But you think, okay, you're talking about like a weird so world a, in which it would be like a like a like, a, like almost like a three step process right, to they're, getting they're, it overhead. You could potentially clean yeah. more weight that way, but I, don't, I mean, I don't know. I really I yeah, actually yeah. don't know if that's that's hmm. necessary. I think the the thing that allowed weightlifters to start cleaning and snatching more weight was the fact that uh, splits in the clean and the snatch went out of style, mm. right? People actually became better at catching it at the bottom of a, of a clean yeah, yeah, of yeah. a squat. Yeah, the squat. So sense. anyway, uh, there's a couple things that happened, guys, that are oh, super yeah? important. Are they? Yeah. Which ones? Rick and fucking Morty. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're back. Sadly, We're back I missed in business. It, but Who I gives a shit? You saw the first episode, though. We the first saw the first episode. Yeah. Let's, 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 let's unpack first the first episode, and we'll sure. catch up on episode two. Yeah. Uh, episode but, like, one, uh, where it opens up with him and Shoney's. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh-huh. And then he tells Jerry to fold himself. Yes, 12 times. <laughs> you can only accomplish. I've watched that like five times. Yeah, it's a fantastic episode. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's just weird. I was just realizing this the other day. I don't have, I think I've had this level of like just unreasonable excitement for a new show or even frankly a new movie in you know a, a couple of years i don't know it's just it's something where it's just like the show was so perfect uh, the season two was so amazing and we had to wait so long for season three that i find myself like in the last couple months seeing a promo material or something for rick and morty and just that kind of like that kind of almost panic level anticipation like when you're a kid and you're like when is Christmas coming why isn't it here yet you know why is it three weeks away like that like that right. level was is what I began to feel and so it's now that we're actually here and obviously the first episode premiered a, a couple months ago yeah. um, and <coughs> so April we Fool's. Ha- yeah on April Fool's Day uh, and uh, and now we're, we're getting to it back into the season but I'm just so fucking happy I can say without we don't have to get fully into episode two now but the first two episodes have been so incredibly strong. Yeah, they are they yeah. are Both. top notch. Yeah. Like just great just as good as as, as yeah. any anything from season one. So season two. dense and mm-hmm. so good and character driven, and it's just excellent. Well, excellent like stuff. Just I mean, the fact that you know the ending of episode one is now the entirety of episode two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like the uh, the like the divorce stuff. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's so like really the, great. It, it seems like the storyline surrounding ep- season three, mm-hmm. at least to begin with, is going to be the divorce. Yes. Uh, and, and how the kids deal with and it. And how the kids deal with and the divorce, how yeah. Rick deals well, with it. Well, and I love that like Rick is even admitting like, ah, I'm not I'm also not handling this well. Right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but anyway, it's just it's a you know, the first episode was fucking fantastic and I do like how elaborate well originally what was episode one was uh, or a lot of the story of episode one, him breaking out of prison, was supposed to be the final episode of the previous season. Hmm. Uh, and they weren't going to end with him going into prison and just using it as a cliffhanger. But then they decided at a certain point that they j- I guess they just did not have the production real estate time wise. They said just to to come to do a whole other episode, and they were behind or something like that. I forget what. So they just decided, fuck it, we'll end it with it, him just what was supposed to be the second to last episode, which is him going into prison, cliffhanger, and then just move on. Uh, so they did that, which was and uh, but the I don't know, just the whole. Um, 
I just love. Uh, well, I, the other thing that we haven't talked about is that they brought the whole the the Szechuan sauce thing right. in episode one, where they he makes reference to the Szechuan sauce that has become like apparently an internet phenomenon since so, then. Uh, uh, wherein uh, he, he so anyway for those for the uninitiated, he uh, Rick is apparently pursuing the <laughs> the Mulan tie-in product, the Szechuan sauce that McDonald's released for a simple for a limited time in conjunction with the release uh, of the film Mulan. And because of this, at one point uh, in the past couple months, like packets of Szechuan sauce have sold for in the thousands, thousands of dollars, which is the stupidest, silliest thing in the world. However, uh, McDonald's sent Justin Roiland a big old tub of Szechuan sixty-four sauce. Holy ounce shit jug of, of Szechuan sauce of and Szechuan like a really sauce. cute note as well with like a really silly little note also the packaging of the Szechuan sauce also uh, has a Rick like and Morty, Rick and Morty references, references. Yeah. oh interesting and so uh, you know I think there's there's a uh, there's something to be said about pop culture affecting the real world but this is by far the most inane way that's ever happened <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> like it is I'm, gl- I'm glad that's where you went with that i was thinking you're gonna say something no no that's good that's good this yeah. is yeah. this yeah. is no, it's it is one guy making one stoner's joke about sauce for well, chicken well, no, McNuggets. it's, it's yes. the thing you know, it's the thing that happens like uh yeah exactly like when you're when you're hanging out in a room and they're hanging out in the writer's room it's like Fuck, man! Remember that Szechuan sauce? <laughs> Let's see if we can make them make it again. Yeah. yeah, like, and that's really. I mean, you you have to believe that that's the thing. It's like, yeah. how far will they go? Let's find out. Uh, and yeah. so I I th- that first episode does such a good job of of a season three does such a good job of characterizing Rick. Yeah, and that's something that doesn't happen in so many shows. Like his. The way he fucking breaks out of that jail is a hundred percent Rick Sanchez. Yes, uh-huh. and and just if you had to describe who he is to people, you could yep. just walk him, walk them through his steps yep. of how he achieves just this effortlessly, <laughs> beaming himself into different <laughs> brains, uh-huh. and then, con- then as soon as he does, just uh, stepping out by saying, "I gotta go take a shit." <laughs> Every time is so fucking good. Yeah, uh-huh. it's it's like uh, it's 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 just a snowball effect from one small act. Yeah. into worse and worsening well the other thing the, the one thing I really like about it is also just the notion uh, that they so they what they do in the episode is they they spend a large portion of the episode diving into a backstory for Rick you know like a tragic backstory that's uh-huh. supposed to define who he is and all of that of, of having had a wife who then was killed by the other Ricks and so he's at odds with them as a result and does all of that only to then spoilers everybody reveal at the end of that episode that that entire backstory was uh, just uh, a total invention by Rick so that he could trap government officials and hack his way out of the prison, blah, 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 blah. But I think the, the bigger thing here is um, I, what I like is the statement, and I think that Dan Harmon has kind of confirmed that in interviews since, that it's really kind of just a rebuke of the whole notion that a character is defined by some kind of silly backstory right. uh, or some tragic little nugget. Uh, and that's something, and this will kind of transition us if we end up talking about Game of Thrones, that I think is one of the things that is manifest throughout even the, the George R. R. Martin Game of Thrones uh, episodes and everything that is just really annoying is that every character... It's like every character, a character does not necessarily have to be defined in how they act and their attitudes by certain events in the past that are there to create a causal relationship, thereby justifying their values, thereby justifying their methodology, thereby justifying all of their shit. And Game of Thrones, uh, which is this long form storytelling, seems to only understand character in that way. Right. So, which is, this is where you get into the wonderful phenomenon, which I would love to one day if I had a second person uh, that uh, was uh, had more time than I do in my life do a super cut of every time in Game of Thrones when a character has to make a decision or is asked why they're doing something or whatever and immediately launches into an anecdote about their childhood. This happens. <laughs> there was a period where this would happen mm. five times an episode where they would say, you know, it's like, but why have you turned against the queen? <laughs> when I was a boy and they'll start walking <laughs> I remember my father once told me that blah 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 and then at the end of it it's like and then so from this anecdote from your past you distilled the lesson that you always have to look out for yourself and that's why you're doing the thing okay I get it and then the very next scene they would see someone would be pouring wine and then Cersei would say 
When I was a girl, I remember I had a doll, and that doll was full of burpy boobs, you know. <laughs> and I was just like, uh, and then that doll was taken from me, and that the doll was, and I'm blah blah blah. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I get it. All right, you, you, there was a thing that happened in your past, and from that story, you distilled a lesson that now affects the, your method of how you do things and your values. I get it. And then in the next scene, Tyrion <laughs> doing something. When I was a boy, my father put me in a barrel full of shit and then rubbed it all over my face. And the and this and again, it's just like it's uh it is one way of telling stories. It's fine, but it was like so abused in, in Game of Thrones to where every justification for every action was always had to be psychologically grounded to some sort of event that fatalistically turned that person towards being the person mm -hmm. they are. And what I love about this first episode of Rick of Morty is it just it gives you exactly that. Like, here's why he's a like why is he a loner? Why is he a nihilist? Why is he all of these things? Here why is he at odds with the other Ricks and it ties it all up in something that in any other show would be perfectly good enough to justify and then it takes that and throws it away and says yeah that whole idea of how to tell stories is fucking stupid Rick is Rick Rick is the way he is and if you want to see what his values are and why he does just watch him now right watch him do the things he's doing and you will learn who he is and why he does the things that he does so and that's my favorite fucking thing about that episode 100% agreed and episode two continues that mm -hmm. that magic masterfully yes. uh, and I guess we can talk about episode two next week but yes. speaking of shows that don't at all do that at all not even fucking close Game of Thrones <laughs> <laughs> this most recent episode of Game of Thrones was not good it was very disappointing it was it was three <sighs> it was I, I watched it this morning it was basically three scenes of people standing still and talking yep. to each other about bullshit and yeah. one fake ass fucking action scene. Yeah, yeah. Uh, fake. Uh, well, here's the thing: it's like I honestly wouldn't even mind, uh, like, let's say the the thoroughly underwhelming Daenerys Jon mm -hmm. Snow scene. I wouldn't even mind if the way they brought those two characters together was in some big conversation between the two of them. But my God, like, <laughs> it's like just the the fact that all uh, Daenerys' entire argument for why and this and that essentially. Uh, was her just reciting her credentials over and over again. Right. Like, mm -hmm. I am this. I have three dragons. I am a lady. I have very long hair. I am the daughter of so-and-so. And again, it's just real basic shit. And then they flip it around, have the Onion Knight essentially do the same stuff about Jon Snow. And I think that this was best... Um, uh, uh, I was watching it with a buddy of mine, and he said this, and he said... The, uh, I said, I feel like I could have written that scene just based on whatever my first expectation was of what a meeting between Jon Snow and Daenerys would have been, which is she's like, I'm the mother of dragons. I'm breaking chains. I also share similar values to the values that you have. But we're weird. There, there was not again. Yeah. This is a perfect example of what I was talking about last week of. It used to be the Game of Thrones that if an expectation is created, it is then has to be subverted in some way. So if the general expectation of, like, the meet-cute between Daenerys Targaryen and Jon <laughs> Snow, they're going to kind of not like each other. But Your then in Uber a few driver will be ready soon. Exactly. <laughs> that meet-cute between the two of them, like, would result in them maybe not liking each other. But then, you know, once they get a chance to talk, realizing that they have a lot, of com a lot in common and would end up on the same side, would be obviously the basic bitch version of this type of seen the kind of thing that any viewer would expect and what was wonderful about Game of Thrones is it would set that up and then throw these things in a wild new direction so maybe they would meet maybe they wouldn't meet maybe they would meet and it would immediately they would be at odds with one another or it would result in someone's death or something it would give you it would deny you that but by means of some circuitous new narrative route that would bring you back around to something that was ultimately more satisfying mm -hmm. and instead they put the two characters in a room and said that's enough. You know? <laughs> yeah, we're all done. Yeah, it's uh, it's not good, guys. Yes. Like this episode has completely lost any sense of time yep. or tr or like space. Oh, yeah, so I don't. How, what yeah. is the timeline? It's this one gone. Episode? Well, How much time well, passed in this one episode, and, and, and I think it's one of the things where it's actually kind of like. I don't mind that time doesn't mean anything anymore because we only have like fucking eight episodes or whatever in the season. I get it. Yeah. But the thing is like, because they're blitzing through so much of this so fast, like the John and Daenerys scene could have been amazing. It could have been something great. 
But they're like, oh, we got this, and we've got 27 other things we're working on, well, so fuck it. I don't know. But I think, that's, I think that's partially putting the cart before the horse, though, because I think that we have since known, we have known for a while that these seasons would be shorter. However, is that a result of production reasons why uh, they wanted, like, we just want to make less episodes, or, so we really have to hurry? Or is it just the fact that without the George R. R. Martin books, mm-hmm. they don't know how to write a robust story yeah, right. full of all sorts of these interesting turns, and so they're just writing it out, and it's tracking sh- much, much shorter and faster, because, like, well, Jon Snow gets in a boat, and he goes to Daenerys, and they're like, hey, you're pretty cool, you're pretty cool, too. All right, I guess we're on the same side. <laughs> Let's go take this well, out. And, like, uh, that's and that's why it's only seven fucking episodes this season. It's just like, how are those other ones so long? Uh-huh. I mean, they get in boats, they travel, they talk to each other. The good guys are like, hey, let's get rid of the bad guys. And the bad guys are like, ugh. Grr. And that's the whole show. And that's what the show is right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, and that, that's, that was the thing I was about to get at as well, was just like, without this blueprint in front of them of, here is how to create an interesting narrative that is subverting tropes and doing all these things. And they're just like, ah, well, all right, so we're going to have to have John and Daenerys meet. They're just going to meet. Whatever. Like, we're going to have... Uh, all right, so Jorah, he's going to have this thing, and it's going to be, like, life-threatening. God, that's so And uh, then next week, uh, he's it's just, gone. like, cured. And there's no there's, scars. There's, there's no, no cost bleeding. to it. Yeah. There's nothing. There's no anything. Like, he's not... Hit, you know, people, no, 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 people, people have, people have for, for Sam. Yes, and people <laughs> have for centuries... Been this this been yeah. cursed with this <laughs> this snowman man thing, which apparently just you could you just, just totally cut just cut off. It's yeah. like moles; it's yeah. just gone yeah. at that point. You just freeze them off like yeah, warts. Just freeze it yeah. off and just you know, yeah, yeah, flake the, it. Another perfect representation of what this I- the this of the new way of this thing is like. Obviously, and again, spoilers, but the final scene that happens between Jamie <laughs> Lannister and uh, whatever Tyrell, uh, the main Tyrell bitch, <sighs> Marjorie, is Elena. that she? Yes, Marjorie. I guess <laughs> is Elena. she Marjorie? Elena. 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 Yeah, whatever. Um, like I felt the in, there was a moment in it where I felt the anticipatory tingles of a Game of Thrones moment happening, mm. which is, uh, if, you know, it's basically Jamie killing her. So he offers, he says like, "Oh, we were gonna do some really mm-hmm. terrible shit to you, but I talked Cersei out of it. So I'm gonna give you this poison." He pours it into her glass. She drinks it down. After she drinks it down, realizing that she's dying, she then says, "I was the one that killed Joffrey," and uh, to them, to him, uh, secure in the fact that now she's spared from torture and all these things because she just drank this poison. Which in Game of Thrones, and I was like, "Oh uh-huh. shit, here it comes!" He's gonna and fuck then, her. He, up. No, no, no. He's no. gonna. Re- no, I was thinking he's gonna reveal in that moment that the thing he just put into her drink wasn't in fact poison, but he just gave her the poison, knowing but, that she would then admit to Joffrey. And now that she's admitted it, they're gonna fucking torture her to death over the course of you know the next five years. And then instead, she says, "I was going to kill Joffrey." And Jamie Lannister's reaction was to go, "Huh," and then like <laughs> <laughs> literally walk out of the room. Yeah, and that was it. And I was just like, I was so I was I. Even as low as my expectations mm-hmm. are for the narrative mechanics of this thing at this point, that one shocked me. Or, like, that was the only, that was it's, the, that it's was like not this season, result. or at the very least, sorry, just yeah. at the very least. Oops! It was actually the same poison that, like you know, uh, did Joffrey in. You're dying in a horrific yeah. way now. Anything yeah, would have been nice. What, what I've what I'm starting to see this season is uh, a lot of retreading things we've seen before. Like, let's drag some chicks through the streets of fucking King's Landing again. Yeah. Okay, let's have people. And you can tell again the the writing is way not there because someone in the crowd yells out "fucking wankers." Yes. I was like, "Fucking wankers!" Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. the best you could come up yeah. with like that's your move and in, in uh, all in their defense it was probably ad lib they just didn't have the taste to take it out but the best uh, character of the season so far has been Euron y- y- you know what is re- he's this the only one that's interesting guys, yeah. you know what this it's is reminding me silly. of this is really reminding yeah. me of something very specific uh, in the gap of time between when the Matrix came out and the Matrix sequel came out there was something that had circulated online. You guys are too young. You're too young to remember this. There was a fake screenplay oh. for Matrix Reloaded going around, going around that some fan had written, but had been written, you know, at full length and as a screenplay format that was circulating around, and lots of people thought it was the real screenplay and shit. And I remember reading it. I remember thinking. This could be the screenplay, sure, but one thing that's really noteworthy here is there's nothing in this screenplay that isn't 
a development from a specific thing we saw in the first Matrix. Mm. For example, the uh, rem- uh, I, I don't remember the details anyway, but basically there's no character, there's no even minor characters mm-hmm. who are just kind of throwaway characters in the first Matrix uh, are just recycled again right. to be used. It's all being assembled things. from what was already there. Right. Exactly. And it's, that's exactly what this feels this like. This really does feel mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. That's exactly this, what this And that's like. even better, just more spiritually, this feels like a fan script yes. written by like some 19 year old. Well, that's exactly what it is. That is true. That is <laughs> it's exactly, exactly it's a fan script. Good point, actually. <laughs> <laughs> We're, We're watching fan fiction. We are watching fan fiction. Uh, and it's just it's just scene by scene. Nothing it doesn't feel well, like it Game feels of like what it is, which is an outline. Yeah. George R. R. Martin said That's these things will point. happen. Yeah, and really they go, on. Cool, how? And he's like, I'm working on it. I'm still yeah, writing the book. The, here's how George yeah. out, uh, George R. R. Martin approaches his outlines. He has an outline of what he wants to happen, ultimately. And then for every single thing that's supposed to happen, he does the work that Kyle just outlined there. Yeah. Okay, if this is what I go- want to happen, then all the setups for it need to be way in the other yeah. direction. And some surprising reveal to make what I ultimately want to happen happen. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and and also just like all of the one the wonderful little details, if you have really kind of commitment to honesty and good writing and all of that like they come in the writing of the thing so it doesn't matter if you know what the ending is like all of those cool little flips and reversals and that like comes in the actual writing of the thing and no one has time to sit down and actually do the writing of the thing because now they need to make more seasons of the show and so instead they're just shooting the outline it's a very good way of looking at it and that's what it is this is the outline for how things go and with all the time that would have come in the process of actually creating cool scenes or narrative sequences and things are just kind of not there because there was never any time to actually create those things. And well, so it feels, yes, like fan fiction. Yeah. Well, and it's one of the things, too, as well. Like, the change in Game of Thrones over the past couple seasons and what is apparent, you know, very apparent now is that it has become regular TV. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Without, like, the blueprint of, like, every change-up, every everything from those books, like, being handed to them, they have not learned how to write in that way. Yeah, yeah. Like they, they, like, cause they, they, I guess they just never figured they had to. Yeah. Like, well, it's just impossible. I mean, I think it is impossible. It is, it is, ne- it is very, nearly, very, very nearly impossible for them to be able to do that. Cause it's mm-hmm. a very singular thing. One of the only people who wrote that way directly onto TV was Vince Gilligan with Breaking Bad, where it was just like constantly turning into something cruel and twisted and weird and dark. Oh, you know, who's going to be doing action. touch-ups on the uh, scripts for the second, the second half of the final season of Game of Thrones. I would love it if it were Vince Gilligan. He would, <laughs> he's one of the few people, who's actual, few people oh. in the world who's actually uh, demonstrated the capacity to do that. Uh, but it's not these guys. Yeah, so. that, that is also a very disappointing reveal. David Beinoff and D.B. Weiss, who were the writers of this particular episode. I think, do they write every single one of these episodes? No, no. not all But of them. They, they were credited as the writers of this episode. Ugh. And I realized that these guys were never that talented or bright. Yeah. They just found a really good book, uh-huh. they knew it was really good, and then did the best they could not to fuck it up into a screenplay are, form. Are you saying that you're not optimistic about Confederate? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what Confederate is. Uh, oh, oh, boy. Cliff is disconnected from the world. It's, yeah. Uh, so that's been the big scandal the last two weeks is that they announced their next show is going to be an alternate history show about a United States of America on HBO where slavery is still legal because the South won the uh, Civil War. And there's so a series the, of novels and on so that. The, yeah, there's tons well, there are of plenty, stuff Plenty, about plenty, that. plenty yeah, of this novels. This is based on, on this. this is based okay, on one yes. of those series uh-huh. of novels. Um, but, yeah, uh, and so this has created, cr- caused a tremendous outcry from all sorts of um, snowflake cuck SJWs. That's <laughs> um, <laughs> 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 fucking Phrase. And these fucking uh, these fucking snowflake cucks are uh, SJWing all over my safe space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Hashtag yeah. no confederate. Hashtag no cuckfederate. More like hey uh, <laughs> oh, Jesus Yeah. Christ. So hashtag. I know Daniel's with me. Cuckfederate. One hundred percent. Yeah. Just all. Of I know Daniel. But no, but not like, to put words into Daniel's mouth. But this uh, is what he told me before the show yeah, started. Uh, <laughs> I'm just. I am just a mouthpiece for Daniel's ideas. Uh, but it is. It is very much them like going out there trying to do the uh, the media like. It's like no. It's okay. It's okay. Like 
we have a couple of black writers. It's going to be fine, right? Look at our black people. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, really, like, that's what it feels like. Yeah, I'm not excited for Confederate, not because I think that the concept is something you can't touch, which I think is kind of silly, considering right now, like, Man from High Castle is uh, an alternate history. Like, alternate history is a big thing. Yeah. Uh, but more so because I don't think these guys are very good at TV. Exactly. Yeah, you can that's do controversial thing. subjects, sort of, if you're Quentin Tarantino or if you're really <laughs> super duper duper well, talented. Well, if they're uh, basing uh, it off of a series of books and mm-hmm. those are complete, they might That's actually true. be able to pull it off because it's only during this season where all the characters you know have what their this is IQs like? turned down. Is this is like, do you know what this is like? This is like, they're like Ron Burgundy when the teleprompter breaks. <laughs> 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 yes! <laughs> they have it all together and then at a certain point the teleprompter has just broken and they're up there just winging it right now. Okay, so and then and, um, um, uh, John goes to Dragonstone and um, uh, Tyrion is, is cool, I guess. Yeah. But uh, Danarus is like told dick yeah. to everybody for some reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes. Uh, so no, never mind. Not based off of a series of novels. Oh, this will no, be not, all oh, them. Uh, all original. All them. Which is like that. That's the thing where it's like, yeah, like this could be an interesting series. It could be cool. Who knows? Yeah, they're gonna really touch but, on some uh, some really uh, like, yeah, topical with, subjects. With the amount of nuance these guys have shown, and the amount of like really writing ability they've been able to show yeah. in their own invented stuff in Game of Game yeah. of Thrones, yeah. you know, my hopes are not that high. I can't wait yeah, to I've, see. Here's the thing: that, that they better be semi basing because I've, I've even read, I think, most of the first book in one of these alternate history series that takes us from with right after the Confederacy winning, like through the history of the United States yeah, yeah, up yeah. through then. That's actually really really good. Like really good. Yeah. Why aren't they doing that? Yeah. Well, is it going to take place in present day? It's, as it's in the like, present day. Okay. okay. So, so all the, way. the question okay. is, how do they handle World War One and World War Two? Whose <laughs> side does the Confederate oh, fight exactly. on? Exactly. No, that was actually in the series of books I'm re- referencing, which I don't forget the name of. It does go through a, a version of World War One and a version of World War Two that's all different, and the sides mm. are weird and shit. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. Anyway, actually not really that interesting, but either way, <laughs> <laughs> this series, this this season of Game of Thrones has uh, started off okay mm-hmm. and just gotten progressively bad. Yeah. And I am, I am. Well, we've made it to the first, here. we've made it to the first high stakes thing that has gone south, which yeah. is like, we finally made it to the meeting of Jon Snow and Daenerys. And so it's like, here we go, guys, don't fuck it up. And not only it's. I, I would say it's not even marginal. Like, it's not even, like, it's not, it's, in, the, in other words, it's not like, I think it was less than what we thought. I think it was, like, overtly bad yeah. relative to even the standards of good TV yeah. versus good Game of Thrones. It, the characterizations were completely off. Yeah. No one feels like no one who feels they were like, last it, season. Exactly. <laughs> it feels like, like Daenerys, <laughs> especially Daenerys, who just, who I get that she's becoming a queen, but basically all she does now, rather than having any point or anything, is just over and over... I am the mother. Like it's it, it's as if like after the where are my dragons moment, they were like mm-hmm. we need more of those uh, memeable lines. So all she does is stand on her two feet and shout over and over again. I am queen of the seven kingdoms. I have three dragons. Do you have three dragons? Uh-huh. And it's like really just uh, just from a rhetorical perspective, just you need to imp- just do some more things to make your point. <laughs> other than just keep shouting. Remember when her character was yeah her char- John Snow is not the case, but remember when her character was smart at some point. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when she was ago. solving problems with unexpected solutions uh-huh. and bringing together disparate sides to yeah. do things that no you one know what this to do. these two yeah, seasons crazy. are ripe for. They're ripe for when future technology allows a <laughs> special edition, <laughs> a special edition with entirely CGI actors, but our CGI is so awesome then it'll be True. indistinguishable from these actors, <laughs> and a whole new version of this will be made after Ten. George R. R. Martin finishes writing these other yep. books. Fifteen years from now, twenty years from now, that'll just be like a plugin that you can download for like five dollars. That that you just Ooh, write the yeah. script yourself and you hit enter and it just takes the existing Game of Thrones. Fuck and writing turns scripts. It into that. Here's what's gonna happen in the future, motherfucker. I agree. Uh, <laughs> you take you take a book. Yes. You there plug it into the books? thing. You, you shove it into the input it, hole. It, you shove it, it, it into, into the, input the book. Input. Yes, it scans the pages as it shreds them. And it automatically, <laughs> it automatically, <laughs> and then it, it shits it out onto a pile of burning <laughs> books. <your> <laughs> and it automatically <laughs> writes its own adaptation in a uh-huh. TV format and crafts the whole thing in CGI there. So all you need is a book, spits out, 
automatic adaptation. I'm into it. Boom. Let's do that. Half yeah. hour. It's a, top. It's, a, yeah. it's, a, it's a really technological blender where you put the book in and then you add, uh-huh. like, you know, I need a screenplay for a movie. <laughs> Just a shaker. Or I need a screenplay Ooh, a shaker for of a screenplay. TV Maybe series. Well, like, it, looks more like, it looks more like a Keurig want. machine. You just insert a book, you close the thing, you hit a button. <laughs> 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 Maybe the medium is kind of oh, different, but no, that's no, fine. No, no, that, 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 that's what the, yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> then it, a paste comes out. You drink it, and then you experience the whole series uh, right then you, and there. Can you imagine if there really was no thought process involved <laughs> to the experience of this sort of thing? Like, no, you know what? No, this is how we get to. I know kung fu. That's right. That's exactly it. Way, this, is, this is step one of putting a floppy disk into a, a needle that's yes. shoved into your brain. <laughs> And step two, wearing lots of shiny black pleather <laughs> everywhere right. we go. Well, that's the verdict. So far, Game of Thrones sucks and Rick and Morty is awesome. So yep. uh, I guess we'll see what happens next week. Yeah, probably more of the same, I would guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Spoilers, you guys. Your, uh, yeah. your social medias, guys. Let's wrap this up. Uh, I am Mr. Kyle Bogart on the best goddamn Instagram. I am uh, Mr. Kyle Bogart on the only Instagram account where you can watch Armin watching this week's episode of Game of Thrones. That's true. That oh, now. that's it's true. Crazy. That I, need to, I, need to, I need to start following you. Uh, I am <laughs> at Cliff Bogart at an Instagram account. I am at a supersonic man on Twitter, Instagram, etc. And I host Hot Tag, your pro wrestling podcast that you can find on iTunes, Stitcher, and etc. And I am at Armin Hoists. Congratulations to Brent Fikowski and T. Claire Toomey for winning the CrossFit Games. Uh, and to me <laughs> for earning a million dollars for nice. calling it. That, are those really your picks? Those are my picks. Oh, we should have gotten oh, deeper right. into that. Oh, well, okay. you guys didn't want to <laughs> talk about it. so <laughs> We wanted to talk fight. about it, but you just, we didn't Toomey. make picks. Yeah, that's fine. We can uh-huh. keep going, though. No, right? no, it's too <laughs> late. Can, I, I have shit to do. But T. Claire Toomey, you think, is That's my win? pick. <laughs> what, why are you saying that? Suddenly Kyle is intrigued. You don't get more money for picking like the lower-ranked people. So you must really no, no, no. Well, okay. So the million dollars uh-huh. is if you get the top ten, top ten, and top five correct in order. Uh huh. And so I think a lot of people are going to be picking Katrin, which yeah, bracket yeah. buster knocks them out. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people are going to pick Matt. Pick Matt. Bracket uh-huh. buster take him out. Uh-huh. And I think Tia and Brent are going to do it. I also just think that they have the capacity to do it. Interesting. You think Brent has the capacity to beat Matt? One hundred percent. Really? He's proven it. In what way? It by by winning four CrossFit Games events last year as a rookie. Yeah. Didn't he at regionals, though? He had some good wins, but he had some lower place finishes, right, at the regionals? And uh, he, he won his region this year. Oh, I, I remember, yeah. but yeah, yeah, interesting. I think... Uh, yeah, the key the key with Matt Frazier, real quick, oh my God, we keep going and talking for too long. Bullshit. Yeah, Yeah, but, about the thing we're supposed to be talking about. Exactly. The thing we're supposed <laughs> to be talking. But real quick, guys, for CrossFit shit. Yeah, the, the key to beating Matt Frazier, if anyone beats Matt Frazier, is someone who has a capacity to actually win events Bingo. over Matt Frazier. The yeah. person most likely to win the most events it's, that Frazier won't it's is... It's three things. It's three things. You have to win <laughs> events at the CrossFit Games. Yeah, yeah. You have to be able to stay within a few places of Matt in the events that he does well in, which is everything else. Mm-hmm. And in the event or events where Matt does not do well, mm-hmm. you have to be able to capitalize. So I think there's only a handful of people that can do any one of those three. And I mm-hmm. think the only athlete that can do all three if the chips fall in his in his favor is Brent Fikowski. Interesting. Where do you see Vellner's shortcomings being? Because he often seems to best outdoors. In outdoor stuff. Yeah, outdoor stuff. The the stuff that that Fikowski, uh did exceptionally well in was like the, the odd objects yeah. and the the outdoorsy stuff. Yeah, and, and there's a swim this year in the, as well. And, and so Vellner didn't do super hot yeah, last yeah, year yeah. on the swim, mm-hmm. and he. Uh, he has been working on his swimming. Yeah, but uh, he's not going to beat Brent. <laughs> but he's not going to beat Brent. Yeah. And um, and so I just think the more outdoor stuff, the more weird stuff, the more... They're going light on the barbells this th- year. The more stuff like that that they throw out, the more it, it favors Fikowski yeah. because of of what his capabilities are. The, the, the less couplets and triplets that we see they're like barbells and muscle ups or whatever Mm -hmm. the less of those that we see and the more of like the weird events that we see Mm -hmm. the more Fakowski is going to win interesting and I think we're going to see more of those this year than we have in the past. Yeah, that, that will be interesting. I, I hope that's the case because I like Brent. Reebok has faith in him. They did a pretty sweet commercial with they him. They did a pretty sweet commercial What about Tia Claire Toomey? I mean, she's really good, obviously. I think Toots. the same thing applies to Tia. Yeah. I think her capacity shines in uh, like outdoor mm-hmm. events 
and in events that have weirder objects. She's mm. not great at sprinting. She's not great at, uh, she's not as good as Katrin at like something like double DT. Mm -hmm. But if you, I think in things like strongman events, in mm -hmm. things like longer endurance events, they're like swimming, running, biking. Mm -hmm. um, in obstacle course, her natural athleticism is mm -hmm. gonna shine. Nice. I think those are the exact places where she's gonna be able to, again, capitalize over Katrin because Katrin is so fucking good at everything else. Mm -hmm that you have to be able to take her on things like sprints, odd objects, and athleticism. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it, again, there just aren't very many people who can. Cara Webb can probably do it. Mm -hmm. uh, Carrie Pierce will get very close. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the the only person that has proven that she has the ability to do it, like Sarah Sigmundsdottir, if the events were mostly classic CrossFit, quote mm -hmm. unquote, would win the CrossFit games. Yeah, yeah. But the more of those weird events are thrown out there, the more of the things that are thrown out there that are more gamesy as mm -hmm. opposed to regionals like, yeah, yeah. the the more it favors someone like Tia, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. And also I just think that, you know, I think that they have interesting arcs. If yeah, Tia yeah. wins after two years of taking second place yeah, yeah. and Brent wins his second year after placing fourth last year, I think those are those are really interesting stories. No, that would be very, very cool. Well, so. I'm in favor of it. You've convinced me. We now know who will win the CrossFit mm -hmm. game. That's right. It's almost like we should have talked about this earlier. Yeah. Wow. Again, We're not out of it. We can just hang out, guys. I tried. We can just hang out. <laughs> no one wanted I'm to. loving this bonus time we've yeah. got Bonus time. Bonus time. Bonus boner time. Bonus time. time. Bonus time where we talk about the... The thing that we should have been talking, talking about, about the, the whole entire thing. That this podcast is supposed to be about. Yeah. Uh, anyway, thank you so much, folks, for listening, and we will be back next week with our second annual Reebok CrossFit Games recap show. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. Later. Mm -hmm.